Vladimir Putin, speaking at a conference in St. Petersburg on Friday, vowed that Russia would meet all of its objectives in what he called Russia's special military operation in Ukraine. Then this morning, both NATO Secretary uh, Jen Stoltenberg and UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson warned that this war may drag on for a long time. I want to dig into what's still to come in this conflict for two of America's most distinguished former military leaders. Admiral James Stavridis was the Supreme Allied Commander at NATO. He is now Vice Chair of Global Affairs at the Carlyle Group and the author of a new book, To Risk It All. General David Petraeus was CENTCOM commander and commander of allied forces in both Iraq and Afghanistan. He also served as CIA director. He is now chair of the KKR Global Institute. Um, Jim, let me start with you and ask you, do you agree we're in this kind of middle phase of the war and what is its nature? What will, uh, you know, who's going who's gonna to break out? We are in a middle phase. It's a good way to describe it, Fareed. And I think It'll depend on the support from the West, most crucially. And uh, by the way, how does this come out? I want to start with three simple words. I don't know. Nobody does. War is the most unpredictable of human activities. But what really is happening here in this middle phase is you've got two burn rates going on, if you will. Vladimir Putin's burn rate is the killed in action, the equipment destroyed, the impact on his home front, the impact of sanctions, that's burning along. And over on the Ukrainian side, it's the patience and the support of the West. So Fareed, if we do the right thing in terms of additional military support, keeping the sanctions on, keeping the diplomatic pressure, I think the sketch map that you laid out of pushing back to those pre-invasion, current invasion lines is a pretty good place to start thinking about when those two burn rates will bring the two actors to the table to negotiate. Uh, Dave, this is a, 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 uh, the Russian strategy after plan A f uh, failed, plan B is a pretty brutal strategy. As far as I can figure it out, it's use a lot of artillery, essentially destroy these towns and cities, and then you know, walk into the ruins and claim conquest. But it does feel like it's working in the sense that very slowly they are gaining ground in the in parts of the Donbass. Explain to me how you see the, 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 the battle right now. Well, this is a grinding, bloody, costly war of attrition right now. And as you point out, it is just artillery, rockets, bombs, missiles. Uh, destroying uh, the defenses, uh, especially if they're in a built-up area, as is the case with several Donets, the current focus of their war machine. Uh, and they then do essentially walk in and take over the rubble uh, after they have essentially depopulated it uh, of both people <coughs> and defenders. Uh, the question really is whether they can sustain this. Have they put so much into this one area uh, that they can't do much elsewhere and that would enable the Ukrainians who are absorbing this enormous quantity of weapons and ammunition and other materiel, uh, building units uh, that can counter offense, could not counter offenses uh, from the southwest uh, toward the city of Kherson, and then pushing south from Kharkiv, the second largest city. And I think in the weeks that lie ahead, we will see which side can generate forces the fastest. Uh, whether Russia really can replace the personnel, weapon systems, and ammunition uh, that they're losing, uh, and the same on the Ukrainian side. And I should just note for some perspective here that the Russians are losing more in a single day, every single day on average, than we lost all U.S. and coalition forces in the worst month of the surge in Iraq. And the Ukrainian casualties are very high as well. Uh, Dave, can I just ask you to uh, expand on this in the sense that who has the possibility in this stalemate to break out? Um, you know, who would you put your money on in the sense that uh, can the Ukrainians actually recapture some of those cities like Kherson, or will the Russians perhaps even be able to expand out of them when you look at this balance of forces? I'd put my money on the Ukrainians. Uh, I think they have, they've got tens or thousands, if not over 100,000 of potential soldiers, if you will, that they have 
recruited or in the process of training. Uh, they're bringing in enormous quantities of weapons from the U.S. and other NATO and Western countries. I mean, 126 155 millimeter. These these are heavy artillery pieces alone. 260,000 <clears> rounds <throat> of 155 millimeter howitzer ammunition. These are staggering quantities. Yes, there should be more. We should give more multiple launch rocket systems, and I think we will. Uh, we should provide the Predator drones as quickly as we can, uh, get all of this in there. I think they have the possibility of doing this, having absorbed so much of what the Russians have thrown at them in several Donetsk and still okay. having not yielded there. Uh, so the Russians are impaling themselves on that location consuming enormous quantities of, again, men and materiel. Uh, and I think when that's done, uh, they're going to have to hunker down and it'll be the turn of the Ukrainians who are already pushing uh, in the Southwest, trying to liberate the city of Kherson, which was really one of the first cities taken by the Russians when they pushed north out of Crimea Peninsula.